This is Dan here, I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson I've got a really cool arpeggio etude that I've just written. There's a backing track, there's a PDF with the notation and the tab, you can download that below. The first arpeggio, I'm going to teach you sort of what the arpeggios are as we go, and basically how I'm playing them. The first one is G. And it's a two octave arpeggio, so we're starting on G, third fret of the E string. And I'm really thinking of this as a triad, that's G, B, D and then G, B, D again. So an arpeggio is just the first, the third, the fifth, and the eighth, or the octave, the notes within a scale. And there are different types of arpeggios. We'll, we'll find that as we go. But like I say, I'm just thinking of this as a very simple triad pattern. And then I have to shift my hand. This is a really good exercise to play something that sounds good. But also, in particular for hand shifts and transitioning to different parts of the bass whilst keeping the notes as smooth and legato as possible. It's a really good thing to practice. So as I'm playing the D on the fifth fret of the A string with my little finger, at that point there, the rest of the hand is moving, in particular the second finger, to get to the G on the D string. That in itself is a shift. And the thumb at the back of the neck is just sliding along very nicely and comfortably. Okay, the next arpeggio we have a C minor. And this is part of why I wrote this, is because when we play bass lines, Lots of bass lines are made up of these arpeggios or chord tones, but you don't always have to play them in a boring way, you know. You know, just a one octave going from the lowest to the highest. You can do, you can make music with that. That's the whole point. So the C, we're starting on the fifth fret of the G string. And we're just sort of descending the arpeggio. So I'm going root five flat third. That's what comprises a minor arpeggio. And I'm not, I'm not going any further down than that. I'm just going back up after that. So I'm starting with first finger and just the crease behind that first knuckle there. I'm fretting the C with that to then roll to the next note, the G on the, the D string. Just roll onto the fingertip. And we've got second finger on the E flat. And then back up again. You can rake using your index or your middle, or alternate plucking. I want you to make this your own. I want you to, to work out the way that fits for you on this. In terms of how to practice this, in the intro I played it from the beginning to the end, all the way through to the backing track. Forget that for now. Just take one bar at a time, piece two bars together, then a line together. Just this is with no backing track. And then when you feel comfortable and you get it together, add in the backing track, which I believe is 115 beats per minute. So we got, and then we've got this funny one here. We've got a G slash D or G over D. That's an inversion. And an inversion is a chord or arpeggio that doesn't have the root as the lowest note. So if we go back to that, the first one, the G. So we've got root, major third, fifth octave. And that's a G major arpeggio. If you start on the B, that's the third of the chord, you've inverted it. It's an inversion. It's a first inversion because it's a G arpeggio, but starting on the third. Okay, that's what it means. And then if you start on the, the fifth, the D, that's a second inversion. And it's very easy to play because all you do, uh, and, and to understand, because all you do is you learn the shape really, really well. And you just play the same shape that you've learned, except you don't start on that lowest sounding pitch, the G. Start on the, the third or start on the fifth. Otherwise, it's the same notes within the overall pattern. Mm -hmm. 
And inversions are really good in bass lines and they, they kind of lead to smoother sounding bass lines. So that's what we have here. We've got a G over D and that's... So I'm starting little finger now. It's basically the opposite of what we did in the first bar. A few ways of doing this. You could go four, one, two. This is the finger numbers I'm talking about here. And then do another one of those little bar rolling things. And then do a shift down to the second fret. Or you can use your third and second fingers on the G and the D, fifth frets, D and A string. But sooner or later, you have to do a shift. And what you want to do, if you can at all possible, is to try and keep all the notes nice and long and running into each other smoothly. If not, you'll get this sort of jerky feel to it. And, and, and part of getting in time is to have good technique. And that, we're starting, well, in this case, on the seventh fret of the G string, going all the way down to the third fret of the E string. You could practice that slower though. There's the little micro shifts when you play bass that have to happen seamlessly. So slow that down and try and get that together. Then we have another inversion, C minor over E flat, exactly the same principle. That's a one octave C minor arpeggio. And if you just play it from the, from the second note within that shape, which is the flat third, we have a first inversion. Again, quite a big shift going on here. So we're starting here on the sixth fret of the A string, the E flat. Probably play that all in position, one finger per fret, meaning fourth finger, first finger, third finger. At this point here, that's where I've got to do the shift. You can see here, I'm using this floating thumb technique because I don't want the E or the A strings to be ringing out when they're not being played. So that's what I do. Sometimes I'll mute on the E string. Sometimes I'll use fretting hand fingers to stop notes from ringing, but whatever you, you need to control that. So let's do that again slowly. Then I've got little finger on the D and I've got this, D-A-U-G, that stands for augmented. An augmented chord or arpeggio is very easy actually. Whatever note you're on, the next note needs to be a major third away. So you can actually play the same pattern all over the place. You know, this sort of diagonal major third pattern going. It's also sometimes notated with a plus. So we're going really, really good for the hands, this little bar here. So we've got the, the D and then I'm doing that little micro shift because we need to get to the third fret, the A sharp there. It's a little jump. And that's the thing, you've got to make it sound like you're not jumping. So there's no, they're all eighth notes, the whole piece, okay? So slow it down if you need to. That's a lovely little, little opportunity to work on every single one of the fingers there. I'm not really too, too bothered about what my plucking hand fingers are doing. I'm not extremely strict on going index middle all the time, especially if you go this way on a bass. It's absolutely fine to use that raking technique. So that's why I haven't notated anything. You do what you find comfortable. And there again is a big jump, which you will hopefully get down to make no gaps. And then you shift up to the G and we've, we're going from a G major tonality to some minor now. And it's the same shape as that C minor arpeggio. I'm going fingers one, four, three. And there again, look, watch my first finger as soon as that's finished playing the G. It's already on its way to hit the fifth fret D string. Everything's got to be really fluid, really relaxed. And this is what I do when I practice, is I slow it down and try to get it very precise. 
you can practice precision and accuracy and fluidity, all these things that we want in our playing. Every day when you're, you know, entering your practice routine, just slow things down and focus on that thing you want, which is, you know, in this case, that sort of smooth fluidity. Another inversion here. So we've got a D7, which is that shape, and we're just starting it on the A, that's what it means. D7 over A, that's a second inversion. Then a little shift upwards to the E flat little finger. I love this little run, it's really good to do. So let me slow that down. Up to the D on the A string, fifth fret, that's all one finger per fret. There I was strictly alternate plucking. And that's what you can do with this, you can isolate little bits, not even the whole bar, and just go up and down that, or even... Just take little fragments of it. Let's carry on. When I get to the fifth fret, to the D, very similar to before, but this time it's my little finger that's targeting the sixth fret, the B flat, on the E string. And when you're there with the little finger, then you can play the G with your first finger very slowly. Now a little hand shift down. And just like we had the augmented, we've now got a, a diminished, and that does a similar thing. Before, the augmented went up in major thirds. This diminished goes up in minor thirds. This sort of cartoon villain type of a sound. That's a flat third or a minor third distance. If you're on the F sharp second fret of the E string, it's like one, two, three frets that way. That's a flat third. As is that, A to C, two frets that way, one string down. So make sure you have all your interval patterns down. So that's very sort of doable here. Then we've got this little section here, another inversion. And see see how inversions are used. Um, I mean, this is sort of, this isn't a bass line, it's like an etude that I made. Um, but watch this. That's where I end up. I end up on an E flat on the G string. And so when I was writing this, the next chord I wanted to be a B flat, right? But the nearest B flat is the same fret on the D string. However, if I choose to play the third of that arpeggio, it's right next door to the E flat. And that's what composers often do. They often use inversions to make the next note be very close to the one you're on. It just leads to a very pleasing, smooth kind of sound. So from here, this is how I'm playing it. I'm going first, third, second which is a little unorthodox, but it works for me. I've got to twist my hand around a bit if I want to do this. Because I don't want that. If you're kind of in a conventional position and you do three and two, you might hit that side of the fret and you get a horrible sound. You could, of course, do the rolling technique just using the one finger, the second in this case. Then we've got B flat org. So that's a big stretch, and I talked about one finger per fret already today, which is a very common, very basic bass guitar technique. Extended fingering has you move a first finger out of that one finger per fret, or your little finger. And that's what's happening here. So we've got... I love that sound. So this is the 11th fret stretching out with the little finger. And I am keeping that first finger there. But if you find that a bit of a stretch, just relax. Let your fingers follow you a little bit to this little finger and sort of jump a little bit. That's absolutely fine to do that. I've got small hands, but I've worked on the stretch in my fretting hands over the years. And you want to sort of aim for this sort of uh, almost like a V shape between the fingers, because then you get a stretch between the fingertips. 
If you don't have that, look how they come closer together. So you just all these muscles in your hands, there are loads and loads of them. When you practice, you're, you're, every time you're working on these things. So that's a nice little opportunity to work on that stretch. And that's a nice sound. And that's why I wrote it this way, because we're going got a little melody in the top here. This G minor chord, or arpeggio. A number of ways of playing this. You could play it like this, and you've got a massive stretch. You could play it like that, with the little finger, third finger, or little finger and bar. And again, here, you have a little bit of that extended fingering going on. I don't mind that at all. I like that. But if you want to avoid that, then you might want to go third finger on the G, then on the D. This is a massive shift, the biggest we have. So let's isolate that. I'll do it this way. So I've been practicing a different way. If I did this, I would go... As soon as my first finger plays the G, I need to then get to the fifth fret of the same string with my third finger. That's a little awkward. And that's how I'd practice. Isolate it. Okay. Once you've got your third finger there, you're laughing because you're in position. And then another shift to get to the E flat. We've played almost exactly that before. And then here's another extended moment. And that is another one of these things where the first finger comes out. Let me reiterate the point. If, if you can't quite keep all your fingers in that, in that sort of shape, then don't worry. Just shift a bit like I'm doing here. You see, I'm trying to emphasize a bit more of a little, of a jump going on. Then we've got the last bit, little chord here. The key is to slide into that, the note here, the F, natural, with your third finger. And then you can get your second finger on the D, and then play the B flat. That, that's a chord. When you play that, you've got to sort of you see what I'm doing? I'm bending the wrist out a little bit in order to play right on the on the fingertips. I've got to curl the fingers a bit more, otherwise I will hit a string and the chord won't ring out. So that's a, that's a little awkward touch to get used to. At that point there, the backing track just goes round a few times. So like I said before, I would actually avoid the backing track because you know, if if this is a little tricky, just take one bar at a time and use it as like a, an arpeggio workout for your practice. Then you might piece together two bars and then one line. And um, it's just a little something for you to work on for a lot of technique going on here. A lot of hand shifts, little jumps, um, coordination of the hands in order to make it sound smooth. That's a really big deal in bass playing. Um, you know, the timing to get from one note to another without it sounding like you're, you know, you're putting in too much effort. That's what we want. We want, we want effortless playing. And this is an excellent thing. I think I'm going to, after writing this, I got really into it actually. And I think I'm probably going to write a load more of these, um, just as practice, just strictly arpeggio practice. I think it's excellent for technique, great for ears, great for music theory. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like that kind of thing, do let me know if you want me to do more of those things. You just have to go to the link below and there's no sign up. You just click and you get the, the PDF and the backing track for free because I'm such a nice guy. But now I appreciate everyone watching my videos and the support you give me. So I, I'm, I love doing these. So if there's anything else sort of like this you want me to do, um, just put a, put a comment below and I will do it. If you did get something from that, please do subscribe to the video. Have a really good day. I'll see you next time.